This is Christian Book Blurb, brought to you by author and songwriter Matt McClary. Get a behind-the-scenes glimpse into the lives of some of your favourite Christian authors. Hear about their books and faith. Also, why not check out my website, mattmcclary.com. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of of the Christian Book Blurb podcast. We have another international guest joining us for this edition today. I'm really looking forward to chatting with um, author and pastor Mark Soersby, who joins us from America. Hi, Mark. Hello. Thanks for having me today. It's great to have you with us. I know America is a really big place. So whereabouts in America are you based? Well, I am a New Englander. So I live right on the border of Connecticut and Massachusetts. And um, what, what, what do you do whilst you're there? Is, or is writing books your main pursuit? Or, or what, no, what, right, what th- this do? journey to write the book was definitely a calling, as we would say. It was definitely an endeavor, a calling, a journey. But what I do in my real nine to five, my, my uh, calling from the Lord is I'm a pastor. I pastor a church, real people, loving a real God, serving and loving one another. So that's what I do in my real life. And the Lord led me to write a book, and and I'm just uh, asking the Lord to be glorified through it. So the book you've written, it's called Forgiving the Nightmare, which is an intriguing title. Um, Could you tell us sort of uh, what's the book about? Sure. Well, first I'll say everybody has a nightmare. Everybody has something they wrestle, struggle with, something that they've keep fighting with all the time. So my nightmare was child abuse. Unfortunately, from the ages of 7 to 14, I was horribly abused by a man in my life. He abused my body. He stabbed me, beat me, raped me, sold me. And in those seven years really shaped my whole life and how I viewed myself, how I viewed others. So I came to this place in my walk, in my trust, in my faith, in my journey, and I, and I said, Lord, I want to forgive, but I don't, want a, I don't want a phony forgiveness. I don't want just a topical forgiveness. I want to know the depth. I, want, I don't want to serve a pretend God. I want to serve the real God. And in that journey is where the words in the book and the passion of forgiving the nightmare came from. That's quite something to have, to have gone through and then to be so open about um, in, in the book. Um, so... How? How did you go about writing a book like that that's so sort of deeply vulnerable and honest? Because the Lord led me, that's the easy answer. But what's the what's the meat on the skeleton, if you would? Yeah. What's the scaffolding around the building? I get it. So what happens is naturally I am a I am a dyslexic. That's what I wrestle with every day, every moment of my life. I wrestle with dyslexia. Uh, academia was not one of my favorite things. It was a discipline for me to get through it. I really had to work hard. I was one of those students that was a C student that had to work really hard for it. And But this story of forgiving the nightmare is what the Lord called me to write. And I just started to pour myself out of the pages, just... You know, it wasn't spelled correctly. There wasn't a period. There wasn't a capital. There wasn't a semicolon. There, I just poured myself out, and the Lord brought others beside me. First, my wife. She is a very intelligent person. She's a school teacher. She she made it legible. <laughs> she took my, my writing so. And, and then we found others to come on our journey. We had some friends that do editing, and then we got connected to a publisher and. And it's just the whole journey of writing the book. But really, the essence is the Lord told me to write this story. I love God. And I know God can do miracles. I believe he can open up blind eyes and make the, and make the deaf hear. I believe all those things. But sometimes we get healed in our journey. David said, I have to walk through the valley. And I think sometimes we want God to heal us in an instant. And believe me, I know he can. But sometimes our healing comes with the journey. And that's what I wanted to share. And again, not just about abuse, about whoever's dealing with a nightmare. What's a nightmare? Addiction, pain, loss, death, all kinds of things that we go to church, we raise our hands, we love the Lord, we confess in our heart, but we're still wrestling with these things. And and I realized the book I wanted to share is about that honest journey so I tell people this about my book. There's a little bit of sadness, because I tell my nightmare, but then a whole lot of Jesus. Hmm. That, that's really good. I like that. I like that description. 
So it's mostly about forgiveness rather than focusing on all the terrible stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Again, everybody has one. Mine was abuse, but we focus on the journey of forgiveness. Yeah. So so let's let's focus in on that then. What is forgiveness? What are some of the key things that God's taught you about healing and forgiveness? Well, let me back that up a little bit and start with this. I think we've all heard a term forgive and forget. I always say it over here. I'm sure you say it over there. Forgive and yeah, forget. Yeah, we do. I don't think that that's a real healthy term. I mean, how can you forget when such trauma has been done to your life? You know, my trauma was abuse. How can I forget the tax of my body and the and how my attacker stole my dignity, stole my value, stole my self-respect, left me with an insecurity and a fear? How can I forget all that? So what does that mean? It means how do I forgive in remembering everything? Well, I'll tell you, the pain of my past was so large. The pain of my past was the Everest in my life. I would wake up every day hoping it went away. The enemy was haunting me with it. It was always about me. And one day I was just hoping I'd wake up and it'd be gone. I prayed hard. I read the Bible, but it was never gone. And even today, I'll tell you that mountain is still about me. But what happened in my life is God became bigger. God's word, God's spirit, God's love, God's truth. God became bigger than the Everest of pain that wanted to own me. So how do I forgive? I give it to God. Oh, it doesn't mean that I don't want justice. It doesn't mean I don't need counselors. It doesn't mean that, that I, I want to have kumbaya moments with, my, with, with, with my, my abuser. You know, there's healthy boundaries. There's, there's good communication. So forgiveness isn't this phony, fake, um, you know, I'm going to love you and tip you through the tulips. It is, God, I've put them in your hands. And if you are a mighty, merciful God, and my theology teaches me you can forgive everyone. Lord, I know you can forgive. But I'm no longer going to keep myself tethered to my unforgiveness or my abuser. And it's a journey. I'm still on it. I don't have it figured out. But I had to be sober with myself. I had to look at the real tangible things to do about uh, evaluating myself and, and you know not blaming everything on my abuse. Sometimes i got a big mouth and it's just because of me. So... What is forgiveness for me is giving it to God, saying, God, I don't want to hold on to the anger. I don't want to hold on to the pain. I give it to you. I know you can forgive, and I trust that you will in your name and your glory. So I guess um, that that answers part of my next question. Um, you've kind of explained a little bit about what forgiveness looks like for you, that, that it's this process, um, a journey of constantly saying to God, you know, you're bigger than this, um, come and have your way. But why? what is it about forgiveness that makes it important for us to do? Because I know some, some of us who've been through really terrible things, uh, that there's part of us that's, that doesn't want to forgive. Sure. We, we somehow, I don't know, we somehow feel that if we forgive, then, you know, they're escaping punishment uh, yeah. or something like that so so what have you got to say about that that, that well, kind of you know thing? there's two ways i'll answer that first the pastor hat you know that's what i do in my nine to five we forgive because christ has forgiven us you know we forgive our daily trespasses right those is what the word so we want to walk in what christ has modeled before us as he hung on the cross as they beat him he said forgive them father um so so that's what we hope to emulate and do as christ did but again that journey to get from the faith to the action is very difficult and i think that when we wrestle with our justification lord i don't want to forgive i want revenge i want justification i don't want to let this person go they're not getting off the hook that's where us and god need to wrestle and let god become bigger as john the baptist said i must decrease and let god increase well that's great theologically but now how do we do it? And again, it's one step forward and two steps back. And it's wrestling and dying to self and transforming the mind by the mind of Christ. But again, forgiveness is not a lack of justice. Let me say that again. 
Because I forgive does not mean that I don't want authorities to get involved. doesn't mean that I don't want my abuser or herder to be prosecuted. It doesn't mean that I, just because I've forgiven doesn't mean, I, again, I'm giving a, a green light or a get out of jail card free. I will seek all the proper authorities to to do what's correct. So again, I, I know how you, I know that feeling. I've felt it. There's many times I've been at the altar and, you know, shook my fist at God. But again, that sober saying, God, I want that sober thought of self say, God, I want more of you. And God becomes bigger than all the pain. Again, that's a 50 year journey. <laughs> it's not yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I guess it kind of mirrors, as you were saying, how, how God, forgives us because we kind of walk we, we we accept his his forgiveness of us and our sin but yet we still have to face consequences of sure. that even though we've been forgiven by him so i suppose in the same way if someone's done something terrible to you you can forgive but there's there's still consequences um, because of what that person's done, exactly. they can't That's... escape from the law or whatever. Exactly, exactly. And I and I think again in the Christian world, you know, as a pastor, I see in the Christian world our default, like a computer has the default mode. Our default as Christians are to forgive because we want to follow Christ, but we never give ourselves, in many cases, the process of forgiving. We claim it, we stand on it, we confess it, we desire it, which is good and right. But sometimes you got to go through that process. And that process is ugly and hard. I tell everybody, I forgave and still in the process of forgiving by tears, uh, tears, sweat, boogers, and crying, and it just all flowed out of me. You know, it was, it was just, it's really an emotional thing because when something is so traumatized, when something's stolen from you that's so deep, my body healed of those seven years of abuse. Praise the Lord. But my abuser still had control over my intellect, over my value. And here I am. I'm in my mid-50s. I got four kids. I, I, I pay the bills just like everybody else. You know, I, I love to go hiking when I'm not preaching or talking. I love to be out on the mountains and hiking away. So I I know what it's like to live a real life. And you know, I'm just a real guy. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm not trying to just sell a book. I want to lift up the name of Jesus and say, if Jesus can do it for me, guys, this dyslexic, abused, broken kid that got a hold of Jesus when he was 16 and let Jesus kind of shape him and mold him. We, he is the potter and we are the clay and make of me of what he wants. And he can do it. He can do it in England and he can do it in the United States. Amen? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that, that's great. And, and you're quite right. Forgiveness is a process and it can be really hard. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, you can help keep it on the web. All you've got to do is buy me a coffee. Head over to buymeacoffee.com slash Matt McClary to make a donation. There is a link in this episode's show notes. So go on, buy me a coffee today and help this podcast to keep supporting Christian books and authors. For me, I, what echoes in my mind when we speak about forgiveness is it's one of these, one of these things which is slightly unique in that there's, it's like... A conditional thing because in, in the lord's prayer doesn't it It says jesus teaches us to pray forgive us our trespass forgive us our sin as we forgive others that's right and so i suppose if if we are holding on to this unforgiveness this this pain and bitterness and everything else not only does it eat away at us because we're not releasing that person into God's hands and God is a just God and he, he will Amen. he will you know deal with the sin of that person um but in, in some ways it kind of God has said I'll forgive you in the same way or, or, or the same amount or, or however we interpret that um as you forgive others so if we don't forgive others we're making it really difficult <laughs> 
for for God to then forgive us. Is, am I on the right track? Well, I would say that because of the glory of the cross, we're forgiven instantly. You know, Jesus died for us, and when we receive Him as our Lord and Savior, our sins are as far as the east and from the west, and He has forgotten them. So we are forgiven fully for the things we have done and the things we will do. He has been our ransom. He paid the price. He was our as our gift. The atonement is the word we use in theology, right? So now we have this great gift of forgiveness that we have a, uh, you know, we were forgiven because Christ took the, our punishment. He didn't erase it. He took it. So now with this gift, he d- desires us to do the same. And again, we're not God. <laughs> and, and in that process of dying to self, in that process of picking up our cross, in process of decreasing and increasing and as paul said now no longer i that liveth but jesus christ in that process we learn to let go we learn to forgive but again we're still flesh you know when jesus ascended into heaven his disciples were there and it said some worshiped and some doubted and i think sometimes that's the way it is we know we are called to forgive because we have been completely forgiven. I die, I'm in heaven, not because I gave on Sunday or because I preached on Sunday, because Christ died for me, period. Uh, and and I think because of that gift I received, I want to pour out that to others. But it's a process for us. And especially for those deep, deep trauma of loss, pain, sorrow. So again, I, I, I know that I'm forgiven completely, even when I stumble. Uh, thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, help me forgive others. But know that it's a process. People ask me all the time, if you believe in God, where was he? God gave me an answer for that. It's a hard question, and I got a hard answer. And I could give you my answer, but my answer only satisfied me. It filled every need I wanted. I'd give you my answer, and it would not ring true in your head or your listeners. They'd say, well, I've said that, and... But sometimes when we're in our prayer closet and we ask God that hard question, sometimes we get the hard answer. But when it's from God, it satisfies us. I know the answer we want. I, you know, we want to say, I, I tried or I, you know, I, you, but sometimes it's not like that. And my answer was this. I believe in my heart. Again, this is Mark. I'm, I'm not answering anybody else's. I'm just answering mine. I believe that God had a call in my life before I was even born. And from my mother's womb, the enemy tried to stop the message, the gospel, the servant I would preach and become for the Lord Jesus. But what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord has meant for good. Not only is the book about forgiveness um, and healing, it, it's, it's a testimony. And um, why do you think it's important for us to share our our testimony with others whatever our testimony is what you know why is that a valuable thing to do well the book of revelation that's why right jesus said he said it right there there's two powerful things the word of your testimony and the and the word of god and those are the things that share light those are the t- things that, that i tell everybody you know many times jesus doesn't have an info commercial jesus doesn't even have a podcast Jesus doesn't have a commercial or a t-shirt. He doesn't even buy bulletin boards. We do that for him, but he doesn't. His story, his his glory is written in you and I. And it's, for me, it pulled me out of that miry clay. And I think everybody here today has a testimony of what God's done. I love hearing testimonies because you know what? At the end of the day, when you have a testimony night at church, it all ends up at the same place. I was addicted. I went through this. I had this going on. I was sick. I was dying. I was lost. I was blind. But at the end of the day, it all ends up, but Jesus. Then Jesus. I came to Jesus, and he touched me and transformed me. And when people hear those stories, that's that's the pillar. You know, the two pillars, by the word of the testimony and the word of the Lord, is how people come to know Jesus. So I share it. I'm transparent. I guess it's good, bad, right, wrong, up, down. It's kind of who I am. I wanted to say to people, hey, I, I got some, I know what it's like to go through a tragedy and I'm learning every day what it means to die to self and forgive others. As part of this podcast, I like to get sort of behind the scenes a bit with the authors I, I chat with. So 
Um, I, we, we know you from America and, and you're a pastor. Um, but what, what else do you do for fun? Have you got like a favorite food or, or do you have hobbies or do you work out in the gym or, or what, what, well, what do you do I, for fun? I do have a lot of favorite foods and too many favorite foods. Uh, <laughs> I, in my mind, I like to think I work out more than I probably do, but I, I do enjoy uh, to to run on the treadmill. I, I kind of stress. I, I, that's not natural for me, but I've learned to appreciate it. The stress level goes away. I, I like fish and chips. I think that's what, hey. you know, hey, that's what we call it, fish and chips. I like that little bit of vinegar on our fish and chips. Is that how you guys do it? So I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, what I like to do is a little earlier, you heard me say, I would love to be outside hiking trails. I mean, I'm not, I'm not scaling any big mountains, but just to be out with my family. I like to be out in the woods by a lake near a fire, you know, whenever I can, I like to travel. Uh, we, we love to just kind of spend time as family. I got young kids still. My oldest is 16. My youngest is nine. Pray for me. My 16 year old is getting his license in the next several months. So, you know, so yeah, I'm just a real guy. I love sports, American football. I know you guys call football, you know, so I love all those things. But like I said, I'm just a nine to five guy. I'm a regular pastor in a regular church. You know, we're not perfect people, but we serve a perfect God. So, you know, that's kind of who I am. Mm, Well, that's really good. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Um, how how can people get the book? Um, I I'm sure we've we've intrigued some of them uh, because, as you say, it's not just about um, abuse. It's it's more about the the forgiveness and the journey towards forgiveness. And I think that's a really important message for so many people um, today. So if people are wanting to 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 dig down into the book, how can they get a copy? How can they find out more about you? Well, there's a couple of different ways. The best way to get the book is probably go to Amazon. You go to Amazon and you can uh, find Forgiving the Nightmare. Look it up there. I'll come right up. You can order it. You can read a handful of reviews we have. That's the best way to get the book, uh, Forgiving the Nightmare, on Amazon. I also have a website, forgivingthenightmare.com, forgivingthenightmare.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm I'm trying my my 16 year old and 14 year old are my tech savvy people so you can <laughs> check out on, I'm on Twitter so uh, it's all kind of coming together but probably the best way to get the book itself in your hand Amazon Forgiving the Nightmare and if you want to start just finding out who I am go to forgivingthenightmare.com and follow us on all those social networks. That's great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for sharing your, your, your story um, with us today and your heart. It's been really great having you here on the podcast today. And it's so good that we can connect together. Even though we oceans apart, we can still have a chat. So it's been great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I pray for you and all your listeners today that the Lord may be glorified and victory in their heart may come. Bless you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you as well for tuning in to this edition of the Christian Book Blurb podcast. Remember, you can always catch another interview with another great Christian author um, coming up soon. We have this podcast that comes out twice a month. So do keep your ears and eyes open for the next installment of the Christian Book Blurb. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks for listening to Christian Book Blurb with your host, Matt McClary. Do give it a like, give it a share, and let your friends know all about it. We do hope to see you again soon on another Christian Book Blurb.